All right, guys, this is an interesting video because React server components have a critical security vulnerability. In this video, I want to talk about what this is exactly. We'll go not into a lot of details, but I'll just let you understand like how the vulnerability works overall. The details would be best explained with a proof of concept, a POC example, which I want to spend a little bit of time. I want to try out some things on Vercel, Cloudflare, these platforms, and maybe I'll create a second video. I need some time in order to play around with this vulnerability myself, but let's just go ahead and understand the general idea. So this is a vulnerability reported by Latchland Davidson, who reported it directly to Meta to react. What it does basically is that it achieves something known as remote code execution, right? So remote code execution. This is a vulnerability. This is something which is of highest order, highest magnitude of pants on fire sort of thing, which happens, which can happen in any system. And the reason for this is because if you are able to get remote code execution on a server, you have basically not only compromised that server itself, but chances are that you also have access to other resources like databases and you know secrets, environment variables. And the reason this is so bad, it's so, so bad is because server is one of the trusted components. You can assume by default that a production server is isolated. It is something that only you can reach, only you can program. And remote code execution just allows you to run arbitrary code inside a trusted environment as an attacker. I mean, there is nothing better than that, right? So uh, from an attacker's point of view. So this is a CVE 10 vulnerability, which is uh, one of the worst <laughs> categories that you can assign to a vulnerability. It's basically a score, right? From zero to 10. And 10 is like absolute critical, absolute bonkers vulnerability. And this has been there in React 19. So it's not something which is very old React or something like that. It's in React 19. And how this works is this is the overview. That is all we have so far but I'll get into like an actual exploitation as well in another video. I need some time to play around with that myself. But the vulnerability is that React server functions allow a client to call a function on server, right? React provides integration points and tools that the frameworks and bundlers use to help React code run on both client and server. React translates requests on the client into HTTP requests, which are forwarded to server. On server, React translates HTTP request into function call and returns the needed data to the client. Now, to put this into English, what they are saying exactly is that there is your client and there is your server, right? Typically, the architecture always has been for the longest time in React applications is your client says, hey, need data, right? A basic simple fetch request, fetch call or something before React server components, right? And server will say that, okay, Here's data in JSON, XML, whatever, whatever your server supports, right? This client is in React and the server is, could be anything. It could be PHP, it could be Node.js, it could be Python, it could be whatever, right? So it could be any, any sort of thing other than React because it did not make a lot of sense to run React on servers. This was before React components were there. Now what React server components brought in was a mental model where the client and server both are in React. And one of the features is React server functions, which allow you basically to um, sort of have a magic, right? So this function is there and on on click, you can just magically call this function. And you know, I don't know if you know this, if you go back and see some of my videos, I have never really liked this idea because of something like this might happen or you know, maybe a developer mistake. There was a company, I don't remember the name, but they by mistake leaked their environment variable into client bundle, like a secret or something. Resend, the resend the email provider, right? So they have, they have, they had this vulnerability some time back. So this thing is magic, right? So compiler on the build time will take this function, it will create it in the server side of the part, which is this part. It will create an endpoint for your function to execute and on clicking it will call that endpoint and it will run this function, right? So this whole magic is using some sort of custom serialization and deserialization protocol, right? Now when you use a custom serialization and deserialization protocol, the problem becomes this. 
right? Because now you have written a custom serializer and deserializer. And in case of React server component, React server functions, this serializer and deserializer has a bug, right? And it has a bug. What it requires, what it does is that somehow you can craft a malicious payload here in the request, hey, need data. And instead of executing like a legit function or something that you have defined, it just remote code executes. It has a RCE vulnerability, a remote code execution vulnerability over here, which is extremely bad. It's extremely bad because now you can get back data like process.env, you can get DB URLs. Worst case, if you're running some more services on the server, you will probably have compromised them as well. But yeah, I mean, I mean, this is like, it can get as bad as you want. You can have like a full server compromise as well, as well as credentials, your database is gone potentially your you know i mean if your database is gone then it's it's end game right so this is the overview this is how the vulnerability generally works now the thing is that what do you actually pass as a malicious payload that this gets triggered right that is that is the interesting bit now let's look at one of the pocs that is available i'm not sure if these are verified pocs or not because a lot of ai slop has also creeped in so i i'm just going by some of these comments which seems legit right so we'll try to understand this i've not done this myself so i would do that and i'll probably create a second video on basically telling you exactly what went wrong but what they are doing, what the core idea is that you are making a post request as a React server component function call React function execution request and you are messing around with the payload that is there, right? So again, this is all uh, custom serialization and deserialization. But you see over here that the author says that using the dollar at the rate deserialization to get a chunk reference and put the chunk prototype then as the then property of the root object then then would be invoked with the root object as this slash chunk when it's awaited or resolved by setting the status to resolved model now we can call initialize model chunk with a fake chunk that is completely in our control this is particularly useful since itself and its related function call many methods from the chunk response object okay i have no idea what what all of that means because i've never really understood the react server components internals by myself but the basic idea if we look at the payload is that you can see that it's a json object it's a json line um, you're setting then to something you're setting status to resolve model reason is another flag and then the value of then is $b1337 1337 i'm assuming is just a lead exploit just a name they have just given it but $b is probably like blob deserialization or something right and then from the response prefix this is where they add like a code that you want to execute right and then form data is again something so exploit is extremely simple it seems extremely simple there is nothing complex about it but but i i would need some clarity in understanding how exactly this works even maybe do a couple of exploits myself obviously in a responsible disclosure manner and once i have that information probably i'll create i'll be able to create a deeper video on what exactly went wrong in the deserialization protocol but that's all for this one i want to keep this short because i want to get back to work and i want to take out some time for doing this myself as well and hopefully i'll be able to take out some time and show you some better results on this part that's all for this one and i will see you in the next video very soon